Welcome to the Cantieri del Pardo stand at the Cannes Yachting Festival, where we have got a complete range of the Pardo yachts. Now, Cantieri del Pardo has been in existence for a long time, but up until fairly recently, they've only been producing sailing boats, the Grand Soleil range. And in 2016, they launched their motor yacht range, and they now have a complete range of open walk-around yachts. You can see we've got a 43 here, we've got the 50 here, and then there are two further ranges. This is the new GT range and the endurance range over on my right. But the boat that we're going to have a look at now is this brand new 52 GT. Now, the idea of the GT range is that it takes the walk-around hull. It uses the same hull as this 50 walk-around, but is redesigned for use as an all-weather boat without compromising the style. So rather than going full on volume-wise, the endurance, the GT range is trying to maintain that very striking, striking sporty styling, but combining that with all year round usability. So let's go on board and take a closer look. Now in terms of pricing, this starts at around 1 million euros XVAT and they are all powered by IPS engines starting with the IPS 600 480 horsepower models up to the IPS 800 range. So let's have a little look at what we've got. There's a big bathing platform at the back. Obviously you have that as a hydraulic that lowers into the sea. We've got a couple of sea bobs on there at the moment, but equally you can store your tender on there. And then this cockpit area is fairly unusual. You can see at the moment it's set up as a, a, a dinette station. We've got a square table surrounded by seats, but you can see that all these backrests fold down and there is a large infill that goes in the middle and that whole area can become one giant sun pad. So that's quite a nice feature. You can see we've got a big extended sun canopy over the top to provide some shade, but that all slides back into this hard top so that underway you maintain that lovely sleek profile. So let's just do a little walk around so that you can see how that works. See there's quite a deep side deck along here. So you've got these bulwarks up to about knee height. They provide some protection, but this being all about style as much as anything, they don't want big guardrails to spoil the beautiful line. So they use deep bulwarks up, up the side and then you get to these steps here. And then there are carbon fiber slot in stanchions. So you can take all of these out and maintain that beautiful profile or you can slot them in whether you need to. There is an option if you want to have the slightly sturdier, safer stainless steel guardrails, you can specify those as a permanent setup. But they are very much about style and they love this lovely, clean, open foredeck. So they see this as the best of both worlds, having temporary slot in carbon fiber poles and ropes so that you can have safety when you want to without spoiling the lovely sleek lines. Now, beautiful teak deck, kind of silver, colored teak almost just beginning to go a little bit gray but very nice and pale another big sun pad area here you can see that little central cushion lifts up and there is a hatch down into the cabin below but they've got the pad in place at the moment and you can see this unusual forward raked windscreen so traditionally that was seen as almost a kind of commercial workboat thing but actually when it's as low and sleek as this it looks really cool it just has a slightly aggressive kind of explorer style stance about it, particularly with this gloss back roof on top. And it's a very low profile. This is only about waist height. If you see me standing next to it, it is really nice and low. So it's all about maintaining that profile. And the other very distinctive thing about the Pardo yachts range is they all have these reverse raked bows as well. So you can see that this is exactly the same hull, but that is the open walk around version. You can see you've got walk around decks all the way around that center console. This is the closed GT version. So let's make our way back down this deck. You can see there's just a little tow rail here, just providing some security in addition to those temporary guardrails. And there are nice grab handles along the side here. And just while we're up here, we can take a look. There's a huge opening sunroof. So again, because there's no flybridge up there, you can have a big opening sunroof. Then drop down back into the side decks and into the cockpit area. And these are rather nice too. You've got these two little benches either side that benefit from the protection of this overhang. So it's a nicely sheltered spot, particularly when you're sort of cruising along at high speed, you do get some protection from the wind. 
There's a sliding door here, you can see that just tucks into there. And then the top half lifts up above and folds up against this overhang, the hardtop overhang. And that's exactly the same for these windows either side. So you can see that swings up and that swings up and you get a really nice connection between the inside and the outside space. So I'm not going to do that at the moment because they're locked down and they're trying to keep the place slightly cool with air conditioning because it's so hot here in Cannes. But let's just move inside. So apparently this is a wine cooler. It's probably the world's smallest wine cooler I've ever seen. But how cool is that? Just having a tiny little dedicated wine cooler set into that bulwark there. Rather lovely. And you can see under both these seats now that people have moved away, you can see there are also a couple of fridges under there just to keep some drinks outside. And now you can see how that high-low table drops down and that whole area becomes a lovely sun pad. There's also a, looks like a little locker in there. What's, that's another fridge, is it? Uh, you can have, yes. Yeah. Icebox. Very nice. Lots of little hidden features. Now it's looking a little bit busy in the saloon, so we might just see if we can drop downstairs first. So this is the galley down version. So it's a really flexible layout, this boat. You can have it with a galley up or galley down. You can have two cabins, three cabins. This is obviously the area that changes. So if you choose to have a galley up, then this area can be used either as a rather nice little cozy lower saloon or as a third cabin. And if you go for the third cabin, then there is a bulkhead here and here. It all gets enclosed and you can have two bunk beds in that cabin. Great, if you've, if you've got a larger family and you want somewhere for the kids to sleep, then that's a lovely option. But equally, if you have the galley down here, then it obviously leaves the saloon free to be a little bit more spacious. Now it's a useful size little galley. There's an under counter fridge there. We've got a freezer, a sort of chest freezer in there. Sink, only got a two, two burner induction hob. Small microwave up here. Uh, it's asked us please not open that so I won't but you can see there is a window there with a couple of opening ports too and I suspect that's a mini dishwasher which it absolutely is and then storage for all the usual pots and pans and dedicated storage for cutlery sorry crockery and glasses and so on now let's go forward into the owner's cabin so it's rather unusual this is a forward owner's cabin and what they've done is they have set the bed across the beam of the boat, but actually got it flush with the hull. So this is just where the hull starts to curve in towards the bow. So it's not at 90 degrees to the, the beam of the boat. It, the, 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 bed, the head of the bed actually lies along that hull just as it starts to curve in. So it's slightly offset. It's a slightly asymmetrical layout, but it works rather well because it creates all this extra foot space, floor space around the bed. And equally, you can see how they've shaved the size down again to create a little bit of room for your feet to go past there. And it's even floating a little bit. You can see your foot will actually tuck under there. So it just makes it easier to move around and makes the most of the space. If it was at 90 degrees, you'd lose space behind it and at the foot of the bed. So very stylish Italian design, nice kind of leather effect, walls, beautiful pale oak and a big bed. And again, they've shut this for the moment, but you can see there is a hull window above the bed there, and then another hull window this side. Again, because we're at a show, you don't really appreciate the views because you're all hemmed in with other boats, but it's a nice wardrobe behind that mirror. Another little locker down there. And then the heads in the traditional position right in the bow, right at the heads of the boat. You can see en suite, Got a toilet and then a walk-in shower, a rather nice LED lit shower head overhead. And here's one of the forward hatches. This one is right forward, so that hasn't got a cushion on, but rather a stylish heads compartment actually, and rather nice to have it in the traditional place, right at the heads of the boat. More storage underneath, and very nicely lit. It's sort of very discreet, almost moog lighting. And then moving aft through the boat, we get to the main guest cabin, and this is tucked under the saloon. So there's not full standing headroom over the beds, but there is a nice area just in front of them where you can stand. There's enough space here to get dressed in the morning and not have to duck down. And there is oh, 
no, I thought that was a wardrobe. That's not actually a wardrobe. Uh, but what we have got is, okay, they're again, they're, they're asking us not to open, so I won't open those. It's obviously an owner boat with some of their own belongings in there. Uh, but you can see there are twin beds under here, quite a decent width. There's sitting headroom on the bed, just about, just so you, again, try not to, I'm not, I'm just gonna purge, but you can see you do have to crouch even actually when you're sitting on the bed. But there is this nice area here. We've got, we've got again, a hull window allowing in natural light and it has access to the second bathroom. So it has its own dedicated access. If you close that door and lock it off, then you do have a private ensuite bathroom. Again, nice deep walk-in shower, small sink, toilet. But equally, when you're using it as a day boat, you can close that up, close that door, and then there is access to the bathroom to use it as a day head space. Right, let's see if we can pop back upstairs. The saloon is a little bit busy, so we might just wait a moment. Am I okay to drop down into here? Now this is rather an unusual feature. This is the crew cabin, presumably, or is, do you use that as an occasional, it's sorry. It's crew cabin. Crew cabin. <laughs> Let's just drop down. Cabin, least favorite guest. <laughs> So here we go, dropping down, and here is the crew cabin. So quite unusual to have a crew cabin on a 50-foot boat of this size, but actually works surprisingly well. There's a single bed there. Uh, that is the most ensuite of ensuite toilets. It's pretty much next to the foot of the bed, but at least you have got your own private space. And I think that it's even a mini sink. Look at that, I've never seen that before. It's a little mini folding sink. There's a tap down here, you can turn it on, but rather cool. It's a little stainless steel folding sink and a small cupboard. So, <laughs> as the guy said, it's either a crew cabin or your least favourite guest. But rather nice to have that option. So even if you don't go for the full three cabin boat, you do still effectively have three cabins. It's just that one of them is a rather small crew cabin tucked under the floor of the saloon. That's rather a fun little unexpected place. Just going to climb back up again. Here we go. And now we can see the saloon. Now, it's not the largest saloon for a 52-foot boat because that's not the point of it. It's not about trying to get the biggest possible volume on the smallest possible length. It's about sporty styling and a really nice, usable saloon that you can enjoy all year round. So there's a decent sized seating area here. Clearly when we fold down that uh, crew cabin hatch, just pull that down. You can see how that slots down into place. And then you have a full wraparound dining area. There's a decent sized table. You can certainly get six, maybe eight people around that with a couple of freestanding director's chairs or stools. That would work very nicely. Good visibility all around. We've got the television up on this side, but you can see that drops down so that you get the view through there. And this is where the galley goes. So if you go for the galley up option, you can have an L-shaped galley around here. And then obviously that space down below is free to use as that uh, lower saloon or a third cabin. But you can see that will work quite nicely actually, because it's right at the back of the saloon. You've got these windows that open here and here. You'd have a really nice connection with the outside cockpit area and actually rather nice to be able to serve drinks and cook here if you want to. But having said that, because it's still open down below, it's not like you're completely disconnected. If you do, if you are doing the cooking or nip down to get a, a cold beer or something, it's all very much connected. Then the helm station itself, we've got a two or possibly even three person bench. That is on electric high-low legs. So you can adjust that and then a very nice clean helm station, just the two touchscreen MFDs from Garmin. Very stylish little black switches for everything. Sunroof open and closed, so this is the big sunroof and you barely even notice it's here at the moment because they've got the screens across presumably to try and stop it getting too hot, but you can see that those slide open and then you've got a wonderful big sunroof, all glass, 
so you can enjoy the actual sunlight coming through there when you want to and see if we can open it press the button glides back and then you've got a really good sized opening so when the weather is as good as this it means you can enjoy the summer sun but equally when it's not quite so enjoyable you can close it off or indeed if it's this hot you can keep it air conditioned and keep the whole place cool so that's the whole kind of point of this boat is to make it a usable all-round boat that you can enjoy not just in the summer but through the winter too standard volvo helm controls so ips engines so as well as the normal throttles there is joystick control for low speed maneuvering for docking mode uh, and you can now steer the boat using that I don't think this boat has got it, but you also have a station holding if you want to. It's probably an option where you press a button and it will use the GPS to lock you in position while you're waiting to berth or fuel up or whatever it may be. A few more electrical bits and pieces here. We've got the climate control, VHF, and that looks like the water tank system as well as the fusion entertainment. Now this backrest here also flips over. so. You can lower that down and you can see once you've lowered that down that will then join up with this sofa here and you'll have another l-shaped sofa there so although it's not the largest saloon space it's actually a really sociable setup so there we go uh, now we just need to see if we can have a quick look at the engines Let's see if we can open that up it feels a little bit stiff that latch maybe you need to tread on it or maybe it's locked oh there we go Okay, again, quite a steep ladder. I'm just going to turn around and drop down into that. <coughs> oh. Here we go. I'm a little bit tentative because I hurt my ankle earlier on this year and it's still not quite fixed. <coughs> okay, here we go. Now you can see that ladder will actually also lift up and move out the way. I'm not going to do that now, it's just a bit too much going on. But you can see that that is a telescopic ladder, so that will fold up and slide out the way so that you can get all around the engines but I'm just going to move to the back of the boat down here and it's actually a really big engine room. You can get some idea of the scale of it. So I'm squatting at the stern here. You can see here are the pods, the IPS pods themselves. They're connected to the engines with a short little jack shaft. That just helps keeps the weight, keeps the weight a little bit further forward and gives a nice balance and trim to the boat. But it also means there's more space in the engine room so you can get all the way back to the pods got access to everything there's a water maker over there <coughs> we've got the two engines you can see that temporarily they've stored a couple of stools down here that's obviously what they use to join up to the dining table in the saloon but it means there's plenty of space around the engines too there's actually quite good clearance too there's no tender garage on board this boat so you do have the benefit of quite a lot of space all around the engines and above them obviously they put this cushion here temporarily you wouldn't have that there when you're running underway it'd be too hot but, and these are the biggest engine options, so they're the IPS 800s, <coughs> which should give you a speed of around about, uh, I think it's about 32 knots, I'll go and check that in a minute. But you can see all the electronics up there, and here is the Kohler generator, and that is the climate control. So let's just pop back up and see fuel tanks both sides, there's one here, and nice to see a traditional sight gauge, as well as the electronic gauge, it just means that if you're not entirely convinced it's working properly, you can do a site check too. So let's just pop back up into the cockpit. Briefly remind myself of some of the stats on how this performs. Here we go. So maximum cruising speed with these IPS 800 engines. Maximum speed is about 33 knots. Cruising speed about 28 knots. The fuel capacity is 2,000 litres which should give you a cruising range at 20 knots of around about 350 nautical miles. So there you have it, that is the full tour of the brand new 52 GT, the very first of the new Pardo GT range. I hope you've enjoyed it, thank you very much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.